If you're one of those who's become infatuated with things electronic, then here's the place for you. It's called Decktown, and it's Digital's Office of the Future. If, on the other hand, like me, you take fright at the sight of all that technology, don't worry, because according to the experts, it's child's play. Take, for example, the problem of organising a new logo for your company. With electronic mail, it's easy. Here's how. I'm working as the purchasing manager, Jackie, and we've developed a new logo which I want to send to the marketing manager who's in a different building uh, to ask him his comments on the new logo that we've drawn up. So I'm going to attach it to an electronic mail message and send it to him. What Peter has done is to tell the machine that he wants to send a memo to his marketing manager and that the memo will include the new design for the logo. In another part of the building, the marketing manager will see Peter's message come up on his visual display unit. I'm now going into the electronic mail right. function and I want to, I've now got a, some information about the message that's come in and I want to read the message and it's now coming up on my terminal. And, and I it's can telling see it's a new logo yeah, from Peter Spencer. From reason. the purchasing manager, George. Right. Um, attached, please find the new company logo. So if you want to, you so can look at it now. It's now telling me to see the picture, just press return. Right. And it will now come up on my screen. Right. And also on the colour screen that I have attached here. It's now giving me the choice now on the bottom of the screen, what do I want to do with that? So I might say, OK, I want to use a different set of colours. It's now showing me the colours that are currently being used in the picture, so I can say, OK, I don't want to use that one. Um, I don't particularly like that one either. Or that one. So all the time or it's my, showing, it, it's yeah. coming up, showing you different alternatives. Exactly, yeah. So I might decide, well, I prefer that, that a, a red background to the, to the blue. At the end of that process, you can actually print out that logo. Yes, um, I can print that out, or alternatively, I could now say, OK, that's how I prefer to see it. And, and I can it send it back to the purchasing manager saying, this is um, how I would prefer to see it. Perhaps a more general application is the correlation of sales figures. The computer correlates, analyzes and produces a graph ready for the boardroom. With this kind of uh, package that we have available in these computers, it's very, very simple. It's a matter of sort of days are now compressed into hours. Uh, and the thing about them, the important thing is that they're very, very simple to use and that you don't have to be a computer person yourself. So the salesman, by inputting his information into your computer, uh, can cut across all, all, all of the That's people right. on the way. And then you, in turn, can, can t tell your boss or the MD of the company. Exactly. Your view of that information without ever going near paper. Perfectly great. And there's no paper involved at all. There's no sort of writing on the back of a cigarette packet or, you know, producing masses and wads of paper that people have to walk through, check, double check and recheck. It's all done by the computer for you. Right. Straightforward. Could you put a figure on what it would cost, say, the average small industrialist, the man maybe employing between 15 sure. and 20 people, to fit his office out in this fashion? Well, if you were to talk about an office of around the 20 people mark, right. uh, maybe one word processor and a couple of personal computers to do his accounting and his payroll, perhaps uh, 10, 12,000 pounds. Uh, beyond that, you can uh, move up from 50,000 to a million pounds, if you wish, depending on the size of the organization. What about the yearly maintenance on a fully computerized office? It works out about 7 or 8 percent of the capital cost of the equipment. So uh, you, you, you can effectively work it out. It's 10,000 for, uh, for a small office. It's about 700 pounds a year. Well, even if you're not in the market to buy a computer, you might be able to help make one. With bases in Galway and Clonmel, Digital say that many components they need could be made here. Well, the reason for displaying them here today is that there may be vendors in Ireland who would be capable of manufacturing the commodities. If so, if they're at the exhibition, yes, please. Sir, what kind of parts are, are available for Irish manufacturers to make? OK, well, we have a, a, basically a, a good mixture here on the stand of both uh, fabricated parts, as you can see in the background there, and um, a recent move that we have made is into a, a subcontract business where we will supply components to a particular local source always and give them the parts and they will put it together as the power supply or the module here. That's the plus side, but at the end of the day, won't office computerisation steal jobs? There is no suggestion that this is a replacement for jobs. The idea is to improve efficiency and to improve uh, productivity, whether it be uh, a secretary, the managing director, the plant manager on the production floor, or whatever. People are a little fearful of the idea of banks of information being built up about them. Uh, do you think that's a legitimate fear? Um, I don't, personally, I don't believe so. Uh, there has been a lot of talk about legislation to control uh, access to data held on computer systems. 
but that's effectively a, a government uh, problem rather than a, an individual problem which I could deal with. Yeah. But I would say that uh, it's far easier to take a file out of a filing cabinet than it is to take a file of information from a computer system. It requires a fair degree of sophistication on the part of the individual who tries to do it.